Next day, I set off to explore more of the Flinders. My guide is an all-round expert on this region, historian and author Lorraine Edmonds. Lorraine, this is a perfect example, a beautiful example of how sedimentary deposits make up the Flinders Ranges and you've brought along a phone book here today to demonstrate that. Yeah, well, can we imagine this was the edge of the continent, we've got um, a continental shelf, lots of material eroded off the ancient landscape and then buried at depth, folded up and then later uplifted and the top three quarters just eroded away so we've got these beds standing up on their sides. Rugged and stunning formation certainly, but the rain has found more evidence that a giant meteor once crashed right here. Lorraine, you're telling me a meteor has hit 300 kilometres to the west and sent up a shower of debris that's layered here in the sedimentary deposit. That's correct. All these little red class that we're seeing through here are volcanic material and that's come out of the Gawler Ranges and it's a billion years older than the rocks either side of it. Okay. Lorraine, that was a huge meteor which has sent up a shower of deposits some 600 million years ago causing, forming this deposit. That's right, it's captured in this really narrow layer here. All these little red uh, pebbles here we call clasps are pieces of Gawler Range volcanics and they're a billion years older than the surrounding rock layers. And then above the, this layer you've got a little sand layer here and that actually captures the tsunami that followed the meteor impact. And Lorraine, the area is rich, rich in fossils. As we're about to see here, beautiful archaeocyathids, the ancestors of modern day sponges, uh, about 550 million years old. So there's an explosion of life here, eh? Certainly, yes, absolute explosion. But before this, just a kilometre or so back up the gorge, we've got the Ediacaran fossils, and this was the first appearance of multicellular life on the planet, and they were, they were found in the Flinders Ranges before anywhere else in the world. So, one of the first signs of life on Earth, eh? Uh, one of the first signs. Before this, though, we had a planet full of bacteria. Now we've got multicellular life appearing for the first time. Yours and my, uh, my ancestors, basically. Is that yours? This is mine? I'd say so if we go back, yep. Yeah, we'll find them in the family album. Somewhere down the tree of life, eh? That's it. <laughs> Further on, we spot a yellow-footed rock wallaby. Now these yellow-footed rock wallabies are in abundance here now, ever since the fox has been eradicated. That's right, they were the most abundant animal here when Europeans first came, and then almost became a threatened species. And now, the last 10 years with the fox baiting, we're seeing about a fourfold increase in their population, just wonderful. They're small, long tails, and very agile amongst these rocks. Absolutely, they, just, they, they literally fly across the top of the rocks beautifully built for this sort of country. And Lorraine, the other treat here is this Euro and Joey drinking some water right at that little bit of water. Not much water around. There's not a lot around, that's why these gorges are so important. They're real lifeline country for the animals that we're seeing. Um, yeah, the Euros, that's what we're just seeing with the mum there, just beautiful with the little, little Joey. They're also a beneficiary of this fox baiting as well, like everyone's a winner. So no matter where we go, Euros here, Yellow-footed rock wallabies there. And lots and lots of red kangaroos out on the plains. They're, they're the athletes. Next day, we leave the ruse and rain to go flying. The true spectacle of the Flinders is best seen from the air, with our Cessna taking us right over Wilpina Pound. Now this is a natural amphitheatre of mountains in the heart of the Flinders Ranges. The first rays of light give this wall of mountains an ethereal quality and we circle it several times before heading northwards. Our pilot is Doug Sprigg, a property owner at the northern end of the Flinders. He's showing off the older rocks of the northern Flinders and promises to take us four-wheel driving there when we land. He also flies us over Lake Frome, a giant salt lake. We'll explore both the Northern Flinders and Lake Frome in our next episode of Travel Oz.